We have been working diligently on a major project to improve our home since before we even moved in nearly two years ago. From our home inspection during the purchase process, we discovered the 20-year-old oil-fired boiler has a handful of pinhole leaks. The oil tank is an unknown age with suspicious rust spots on the bottom. And the boiler's chimney is unlined, needs major repair, and is shared with a fireplace in the kitchen. We hope to install a wood stove in the kitchen someday, which would require the boiler to vent elsewhere. To avoid throwing good money after bad, and to reduce the cost and carbon impact of heating this huge old house, we decided to install a completely new heating and cooling system from scratch. We decided to install an air-to-water heat pump system, which uses electricity for fuel and should be much more efficient to operate than our old boiler. The first phase of this project was completed in summer 2023, supplying much needed air conditioning to our kitchen and in-law apartment, and of course, heating now that it's wintertime. We purchased an Arctic Heat Pumps brand 5-ton air-to-water heat pump system. They provided the outdoor compressor and condenser unit, indoor buffer tank, primary pump, and controller. The basic system schematic is shown here, borrowed from Arctic's website. From these major components, I had to figure out the rest of the plumbing, electrical, and controls. I did all the installation myself. We chose to purchase Space Pack branded hydronic fan coils as our heat emitters. This video is a brief overview of this process. We will have many more detailed videos coming out as well. This is the buffer tank. This is an 80 gallon composite tank, insulated. This is uh, the Arctic heat pumps, 80 gallon. The buffer tank is important because it adds significant thermal mass to the system, um, volume of water, and um, decouples the heat pump hydraulically from the rest of the system. The flow through the heat pump is a lot more than the flow through any of the heat emitters in the rest of the house. Um, so this buffer tank will allow for mixing and the separate flow rates without complicated controls. I have the majority of the components mounted to my board here. The outdoor unit, the heat pump itself, will output uh, you know, hot or, or cool water depending on the season, but let's assume that we're heating the house. So hot water will come out and will come into here. I have a air separator um, with a expansion tank and then this here is a glycol feeder so this tank will be filled with my glycol mixture um, I'm gonna run 30% glycol propylene glycol and this will maintain system pressure and automatically refill um, as needed if I have a small leak somewhere a temperature pressure gauge right here so I can monitor essentially the the temperature of the water coming out of the heat pump I've got my fill purge valve here so it'll come out of here it'll go into my tank I'm not I think it's gonna go in to the tank right here uh, this is the thermal well where my controller will read the tank temperature um, the tank has a drain down here. It has an air vent up here. Connect back over to here where I have a dirt separator. And then my circulation pump for the, um, for the heat pump loop. Another pressure temperature valve or gauge for the distribution side. So water will come out of here, connect over to my circulator pump for the distribution loop, and then go into my manifold. 
I have... Initially, there's actually going to be three zones. I need to cap this one off, but I could have up to six zones on this manifold. Temperature here, going up to the, um, the system. And then I've got my returns here. There's a flow meter built into each return. And then temperature there as well. On the wall, this is my heat pump controller. This will control... The heat pump unit outside based on the tank temperature and basically try to maintain that tank temperature this is my pump controller um, it's a two zone because I may I'm, I'm basically having room for expansion but right now I just have one pump and this is gonna have um, my thermostats or fan coils upstairs will come into here and trigger that um, distribution circulation pump uh, whenever there's a draw. The thermostats or the fan coils upstairs will also open the appropriate zone valve. Got the insulation on. There we are. I got the, these are the main uh, feed lines to and from the heat pump unit outside. So those are connected. They run behind this shelf and they come up and they go out there. Uh, my local Arctic heat pump rep came out to see how things were going. Um, turns out this is actually the first system he's seen personally installed. Um, he's sold a few systems in Massachusetts. Um, I'm in Connecticut. He's based in Connecticut. So uh, he wanted to come out and just kind of see everything. This is a multiple, uh, you know, adjustable speed pump where basically um, I'll have this set to essentially hold a constant pressure. And then um, I have valves, zone valves for each of my upstairs units. This is the Arctic controller, and this just gets, this turns the heat pump on the first time, and you just set the limits really high, so essentially this is always calling for heat or cool, depending on which mode you're in. And then this HBX controller actually does the work of turning the heat pump on and off as appropriate, so um, they both need the tank temperature in order to function. The majority of the plumbing is done. This unit is fully installed, wired, plumbed. Um, obviously, it's not quite done because we have to uh, still. We're gonna put some, just some pine trim boards along here to kind of fill in the gap and make it look better. Um, you know, we gotta fill that in with sheetrock, but. The only access to install the pipes and wires for the bedroom fan coil was in this tiny crawl space area with an opening too narrow for me to fit. Thankfully, Mary was happy to don protective gear and crawl in there and get these pipes installed. Ryan? No, the thing pulled out of the... around the plastic. I just won't go in as enthusiastically. Yeah. It's partly because I have to close my eyes. Yeah. That's probably fine, right? Obviously, my leak is not fixed. It is bigger, in fact. So, I gotta take this off again. This is now the third time I've had to take this one apart. I'm gonna think I'm gonna try it without the tape. Um, just put sealant in there. It's still a leak here. This is where the nipple goes into the tank. That's leaking. 
So we turn this on. All right, there we are, all connected. What this will do is give me the ability to, when it comes time to add my other stuff on, I just pull the plug out, open the valve, and I'll be able to bring the next part of the system online without having to take the tank offline or drain it out or anything like that. This is a little bit of forward planning. Oh, we got a couple leaks. Big one there. Big one there. Here. Down in there. Not sure if you can see that. Down here, up here, so that's great. This all basically has to come all apart again. Excellent. So I'm starting to fill the system with glycol. So I have a five gallon bucket and I've got um, some washing machine hoses hooked up to either side of my manifold. The manifold is closed to the rest of the house, or to the rest of the system. And I have one zone upstairs calling for heat so that my zone valve is open. I will be pumping the fluid out of the bucket through the zone and then back into the bucket and I'll keep an eye on it and basically keep pumping until I don't see any air bubbles. That's all three running and a couple tiny little bubbles in there. Not sure if you can see those, but for the most part, I think we're good. I'm going to let it run for a few minutes and just make sure we get everything out. I think I've got all the leaks fixed. All the plumbing put back together. Um, all the sensors back in. And I think we're ready to fill it up, finally. It's been a long, long journey to get here. Um, a lot of leaks. That was the most frustrating part. Got the insulation all the way. You can see my condensate drain headed outside right there. Still got a little bit of a, you know, wire management to deal with, but um, on the whole, it should be functional, so. Well, there we are. It's running. This is a big, big, big day. I'm so excited. It's very, very quiet. Let's go inside again. This is, this is great. This is the one zone I have on right now. There is air blowing from it. I can't tell if it's cool yet, but it's probably going to take a bit to kind of get up to speed. So this has been running for about a day. Um, there's a couple issues. Um, the first is that, well, and the most major is that we're not really getting much cooling performance upstairs. Um, it basically isn't really doing anything. And one of the things I realized was that I had left this check valve in the circulator here. Um, the other thing that I realized, I made a mistake, and I've got this manifold plumbed backwards. So right now my supply water comes in here, and the valves are, are on this side, goes out, comes back, and the flow meters are here, and it returns to the tank. Um, Normally this would be the other way around, which is why my flow meters are not registering anything. They need to go the other way in order to work. Um, we are still getting, was that, 65 degrees supply temp upstairs, and it's coming back at like 82, um, which is still a really, really large delta T, I would think 
we should be more in the range of uh, 10 to 15 degrees. Maybe 10 degrees would be good, but um, we'll just see what happens. Let this run for a little while. All right, so I made a couple changes. It's really improved the performance. Um, the primary thing was, I think I mentioned I had the manifold plumbed backwards. Um, so I flip-flopped which hose goes to which side of the manifold. There's a there's union couplings here, so um, that was the easiest way to do it. Unfortunately, my plumbing, the, the pipe routing is not great. In addition to flipping these, I had to flip the these hoses up on the fan coils so that the in and the out stay the proper direction. But um, this is working much better and it also allows my flow meter to work. And the glycol feeder is working good. I don't know if you can see. Yep. So it was right full up. And so I've taken this apart, I don't know, half a dozen times to fix issues. So um, once I'm all set, hopefully we don't have any leaks and that doesn't go down. But this has been working really well to keep the system pressure where it should be. So here we are. We've been running the system for about six months. Um, really couldn't be happier. It's great. It's quiet. It uh, does what we want. Uh, it wasn't cheap. I will do a video on how much it all cost, um, along with videos showing the whole process along the way. Um, so subscribe, stick around, and uh, thanks for watching.